everyone. In case you don't already know, my name is Rhiannon, and I am a student of the Enmiopia Method for Natural Vision Improvement, developed by Jake Steiner. Today's subject, child myopia. This one's a hard one. Okay, first, I want to apologize for all the background noise. It is way too nice to be cooped up in the house after the whole winter being cooped up in the house. So, the price for this video is you get the background noise. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> Anyways, as a parent myself, I know how devastating it is to watch your child's eyes go from perfect to less than. The first thing I want you to do is take a nice deep breath and exhale. Myopia is a refractive error. It is not a medical condition. This is not emergent. You do not need to be frantic. It is more important than ever for you to make good, informed decisions because you're making these decisions for eyes that you can't see through. You're building better vision habits for your child that's going to take them through life. You're not going to fix this overnight. Hopefully, you've already been on this journey for yourself and you have an understanding of the journey itself so that you can better help your child implement it. But don't try to explain the whole thing to them. They're not going to understand. If you try to encourage your child to use active focus, most kids are going to glaze over. And they're not going to know what you're talking about. And it's not going to be interesting to them. Secondly, the last thing you should do is turn this journey into a form of punishment. Don't take away their tablet and their phone, and their books, and their Legos, and all of that starting today. Make small changes. It should not come across as a punishment that they're being penalized for their eyes getting myopic. You need to engage them with their vision in a way that's encouraging for them to have better vision habits. So if they are used to having tablet time, then allow them to have their tablet time. Just try to cut back how much time it is. Encourage a break in between. Maybe an incentive. If you normally get a half an hour on your tablet, okay, well today you're going to have 40 minutes with the condition that after 20 minutes we go outside and we walk for 10. And then you get another 20 minutes when you come back in the house. Small things like that that's going to be encouraging and not feel like punishment is very important. Again, don't try to explain active focus to a child. Most of them are not going to get it. A lot of adults don't seem to get it. Just encourage them to engage with their vision in a way that's natural. Playing sports is a fabulous way for them to engage with their vision. Taking your child for a walk and playing I Spy, let's count how many squirrels we can find. Let's how many birds we can find. Uh, let's identify a certain type of tree by its bark and see how many are like it. Things like that that just naturally engage their vision in a form of a game. The more fun you can make it, the better. And then not only does it not come across as a punishment, but it also builds good memories of mom or dad was playing with me rather than mom or dad was restricting me. And those memories are priceless anyway. In current modern society, we have way too much of everyone's looking at their own screen and people aren't engaging with each other. And you need to build a childhood for your child that they can look back and remember fondly. Those walks, they may be hard for you to incorporate now in your busy schedule, but I guarantee you when your child turns 18 and moves out of the house or whatever age they move on to the next stage of life, you're not going to look back at them as wasted time, as time you wish you could get back. Those are going to be some of the most precious memories. Just walking around with your child, enjoying wildlife. It's actually quite amusing. The squirrels fighting is something my children love to point out. And just observing the birds and, and all the things that nature has to offer. That's going to give them quality memories of their childhood and teach them to engage with their vision and the presence of being in the now in the world around them rather than that screen. Other times you can also trade. If they're used to using a tablet and it's possible to switch it to the television so that they can sit at a greater distance, that's a great idea. 
because more distance is less strain on the ice. Once again, you're not trying to deprive your children of all the things that they like. They're going to want to rebel against it. You want to set them up with better vision habits for life. So good close-up habits, good breaks, good balance of their close-up habits. Rather, they're in school already or they're going to start it soon. They're going to need those habits of knowing how to do close-up in a healthier way. If your child's not already using correction, don't introduce it yet. Get outside, try to get rid of the ciliary spasm, implement better vision habits, and do your own measurements. Once you find out where their vision actually is, then if needed, you can introduce correction later. There's no need to rush. No harm will come from waiting for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. If your child's already wearing correction, don't just try to take it away. Teach them to use it in a way that's healthier to only use it as needed, and to never wear full correction for close-up. It's important that you build the better vision habits, take your own measurements before trying to make any alterations in their correction. In summary, more outdoor time, better light at all times, gradual shift to better habits, positive reinforcement, engage with vision naturally, and make informed decisions. I don't have all the answers. If anybody does, it's not me. But I want to help you find answers because I'm a parent too and I know where you're coming from. So make sure you check the links in the description below. I will see you around the community and best wishes in yours and your child's journey back to 2020.